Greetings, fellow gorehounds, and welcome back to another Blood Splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. I'm Count Jackula. And we just watched Netflix's new original movie, Malevolent, which I actually believe is a UK movie that they purchased and are just uh, essentially distributing. I, I think so. <laughs> I'm not entirely... It is set in Scotland. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, there's a lot of Scottish in this movie. Like, the main character's uh, uh, grandfather is Scottish, he drinks scotch, and he's got a Scottish terrier. So. Yeah, yeah. All he really <laughs> needed at some point was, like, a sheep. Yeah. And a shillelagh. <laughs> And it would have been just perfect. So, I, I, so I, I th I'm pretty sure it's a Scottish movie. It might be just a general UK movie because there's like there's multi casting in this movie. Yeah, yeah. There's like some the two main characters are like technically American, American and there's but a they British have, girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. There's American, two American main characters, a British girlfriend, a friend who is also British. Yes. Uh, and the idea is that they come to Scotland because. They kind of had to make a fresh start because they fucked things up in America. Yeah, yeah, and you kind of get a get a feel for how bad they fucked things up because at the beginning of the movie, basically, you find out that like the the big brother is in with like the Scottish mob or something or owes them money. Yeah, they just <laughs> beat his head in with a lead pipe. But the know? basic premise of this movie is that they are frauds who run one of those like, hey, we look for ghosts, and when we find ghosts, we exercise them from your house. For it, a reasonable fee. It, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, kind of like The Last Exorcism, but without yeah. the religious stuff. Yeah, or The Frighteners. Or The Frighteners. Frighteners is another good example. And uh, the premise is uh, they come upon a house in which the ghosts are real, and then the movie happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's the basic <laughs> premise. Yep. Uh I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, it's a pretty good movie. It is not going to, like, blow your mind or be the next big horror movie that everyone's going to copy. No. But it was a solid fucking film. Yeah, it's not going to insult your t intelligence either. No, no, no. You know? It's got some good twists and turns. It's got characters that you care about and a character you love to hate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I gotta say. Yeah, you, you, you need a character you love to hate. You and uh, it also, it's got some spooky moments that were, like, legitimately like, yeah. ooh, that's, that's pretty spooky. Some good imagery. Um, it gets pretty brutal towards the end. Yeah, it gets thing. very bloody at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. like, this is, this is one of those ghost stories that gets bloody. So, uh, you know, wear your, uh, your uh, uh, what is it called? Wear your apron. Apron, yeah. yeah. Wear your apron. Wear your splash zone <laughs> fucking cover. Put, a, put yeah. on a raincoat. It's gonna <laughs> rain. <laughs> It's going to rain, motherfucker. Oh, I mean, yeah. we're exaggerating a little bit. It gets bloody, but it's not like fucking, like, raining blood like Evil Dead. No, no, it's not the end of the <laughs> Evil Dead remake, rain and blood kind of thing. But, but it's, it's, it's pretty brutal. It's brutal for a ghost story. Yeah, usually a ghost story is sort of like, oh, it's like the, the horror is largely in your imagination. Yeah. This one is like, okay, no, we're just going to fucking... <laughs> yeah, yeah, shit's <laughs> happening. People are getting brutalized. Someone broke his leg. Oh, fuck, it's brutal. Yeah. Um, And uh, I really like that. As you all know, I love myself some brutal horror movies. And this was like the best of both worlds. A good ghost story and a brutal horror movie combined into one. Yeah, it was. Um, And uh, on top of that... um. Man, what more can we bring up before we get to the spoilers? Not much, because it's really simple. It's, yeah. it's This is a very simple movie. It's very straightforward. It's, it's like an hour and 27 minutes or something. Yeah, it doesn't do a lot of stupid crap. No. It keeps, it keeps, its, keeps to its premise, and it's largely a horror movie, but this could sound really dumb, but it's largely a horror movie because of the blood and subject matter. Yeah. yeah. You know, but but because there are a lot of moments in this movie where you're like, well, this could just be a movie about a bunch of scammers that run into something slightly spooky. And a drama between like the, the, the little sister that wants out and the big brother that keeps doing it because he's he has to or he's gonna be fucking beaten by the yeah, mob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mob's gonna fucking <laughs> off him, you know. You know, because there's a lot of that. It's not really until like forty five minutes in that like the supernatural shit really. Oh yeah. It's it, the thing is is that it takes its time to get to that point, but it's it feels really well paced. It does. Despite that. Yeah. Because it's all it's all set up. It's all really good. I give it a thumbs up. I give it a definite thumbs up. If you're browsing Netflix and looking for a horror movie to watch this spooktober, definitely check out Malevolent. It is it is worth it. Um, don't let the uh, the Bloomhouse title fool you. It is not oh, a Bloomhouse movie. It is not a Bloomhouse movie at all. <laughs> it, no. it, 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 is, it is definitely its own beast. Yeah, it's much more in line with a lot of the horror movies that Netflix has been releasing lately. Yeah. You know, where there are these kind of, like, nice mid-budget... Yes. You know... The mid-budget genre picture they are excelling in. Yeah. 
And I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's why when people are like, oh, what's Netflix really good for? I'm like, they're good for the types of movies you used to be able to fucking find on cable all the time. That's true. Yeah, you used to be able to get these from you used to get be able to find these all over the place. Well yeah, well this, this movie it's it, it it's like this movie is not gonna like go into the annals of horror history the way like the conjuring or insidious will. Oh no. But it it's it's like well, it's like um like like those like B level seventies movies that were really good. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, I'm trying to think of a really good one. What was there was one I keep bringing Burnt up. Offerings. Burnt Offerings, yeah. That's a good example. Yeah, Burnt Offerings is a very good example. Oh, one thing I can bring up that I liked about this movie, um, without getting into spoilers, is I liked that this movie was colorful. Um, a lot of these spooky ghost stories kind of kind of do these muted muted color palettes. Yeah, they try to cheat by like turning everything blue or gray. Well, they basically you know? desaturate it, you know, yeah. and like I, it becomes like they start to look the same. And what I liked about this movie is that it was actually allowed itself to be colorful. Yeah, and it didn't lose any atmosphere by doing that, and I appreciated Ooh, that. No, um, well, because it one of the, one of the things about like when you really film color properly is that it allows the deep dark areas to actually be deep and dark without mm. losing information without yes. losing fidelity you know whereas when you do like the those kind of cheap ass filters like you yeah. lose so much um it is set in the 80s um though you kind of forget that while you're watching it yeah the only <laughs> reason i feel like the only reason it's set in the 80s the is technology so yeah, so we don't have to have cell phones in the movie. Yeah, to keep the technology lo-fi. Because other than that, they didn't dress like they're in the 80s. No, you know? no, no. Like, the only the only moment where it felt even remotely important was when they got that huge camcorder. That oh, yeah. The big some, bulk. Yeah, it becomes a bit of an <laughs> the issue. The VHS camcorder, big bulky shit. Yeah, that, like, yeah, yeah. But Your like, fucking grandma got you for Christmas and never looked as good as you wanted it to. But <laughs> Yeah, oh my god. I fucked up. I fucked up mad uh, VCR camcorder. Oh, man. <laughs> Why isn't make... it working anymore? Oh. <laughs> Who knew you couldn't put peanut butter in it? Oh, my God. I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds, my friends. Either that or stupid minds. Yeah. It's one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I suppose uh, let us move on to the spoilers. <laughs> All right, so uh, basically the only real spoiler of this movie is that it turns out the ghosts are not the bad guys in this movie. Yeah, you know, it the ghosts are not the bad guys. They basically they go to this house. They go to this house that used to be a foster home for little girls, and years ago, like the the person who owns the house's son killed all the foster girls. Yeah, killed a bunch of the foster kids. <laughs> and uh it was this great big like Scottish death murder serial thing, yeah. serial killer thing that made headlines and shit. And uh ever since then or at least recently, she has been hearing the screams of girls throughout the house. So she calls in our main characters who as I stated earlier are frauds, but it turns out over the course of the movie the sister actually has inherited from her mother the ability to see ghosts. She just hasn't realized it yet. Yeah, because there's never been a ghost to fucking perceive. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so, like, they go to this place. She starts seeing ghosts. Uh, before this, she has, like, dreams of her mother and stuff, so we get, like, hints. Yeah, 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 but it's not, like... It's nothing that would lead a reasonable person to think, I have psychic powers! But you know, because of the expositional dialogue that they give, that, like, okay, when her mother saw stuff, her nose would bleed, and she just kind of zone out, and that starts happening to the main character. Yeah, yeah, so. and eventually, like, she went crazy and killed herself. <laughs> exactly. Because... And so they go to this place. She starts seeing little girls with their mouths stitched closed, walking around the yeah. house and like leading her into rooms and hidden chambers and shit. Um, a character ends up getting their leg broken because the floor gives out, revealing this like torture dungeon. Yeah. With like the little girls like help me written on like the yeah, walls and, and shit. Yeah, and this is like, and this is a thing that actually gets the main characters in trouble. Yes. You know, because this... they found they found the secret dungeon where they keep the uh, the victims. Yeah, and they went in there with a camera. Because it turns out the uh, the mom who owns the place and whose son killed the girls is actually the murderer, and her son is just her accomplice. Yeah, basically she has she has, she killed the little girls and she sewed their mouths shut because she wanted them to be good proper young women, but they wouldn't shut up, no. little scamps. So, yeah, yeah. So, so she, she cut out fucking... their she cut out their tongues, broke their jaws, and sewed their mouths shut. 
When we're talking brutality, we're talking brutality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, get to, you get to watch this whole process. And so, you don't see it happen movie. to a little girl, but you do see it happen to one of the main characters, and ugh. Yeah, <laughs> pretty nasty. It is the character that you are most likely to want to see it happen to, though. So it says a lot that even though it's the character you hate the most, you are sitting there going like, oh, Oh no! Yeah, I yeah. don't know if he deserved that. No. Yeah, yeah. They did a really good. Jo- they were such a good job of that torture scene. Oh god, you know? yeah. It's that great. was that was a lot of fun. That might not be up there with like, um, uh, fucking hostile two, but no, no. It's it's, it's it's it was pretty good. It was super. Well, it's kind of like how like the ghost scenes aren't necessarily going to be like up there with all the best ghost movies, and the torture scenes aren't going to be up there with the best torture movies. But it does everything it does well. Well, yeah, you know. Yeah, um, like if you paid money for this movie, you'd be like, "Well, yeah, pretty yeah. good." This would have been really good on the big screen, you know. Oh like, yeah, I, I, yeah, like Netflix was a great way to watch it because, like, you 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 risk nothing checking it out. Considering we saw Unfriended on the big screen, well, yes, yeah. I would totally prefer this over Truth or Dare or Unfriended on the big screen. <laughs> I would prefer this big time. All over the. I, if I could go back in time and replace my screen, my, replace the screening of Truth or Dare with with this movie, I would have come out like, "Oh man, this Truth or Dare movie is great." great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that would have been. That been so I don't know why it's called that, but what the fuck? <laughs> I I don't know if it's you know just as an aside, I don't know if it's time that that creates charm or what, but every time I see like a modern. Half the time when I see, like, a modern movie that's trying to be an 80s movie. Yeah, yeah. There's, like, two levels. There's absolutely fucking nailed it, and then there's, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know? That could happen. That yeah, happen. but I mean, like, like I don't know why. I have a, a great fondness for Sorority Babes at the Slime bowl Rama. Mm-hmm. Not a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Not a well, good I mean, fucking movie. To a certain extent, time time can create charm because there's a lot of movies that came out in the '90s that I just hated that now I look back on and I kind of have a soft spot for. And I feel like I, I feel like that that could be true for something like Truth or Dare or Unfriended. I don't know. Time will tell. I don't know about Unfriended. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Truth or Dare. Yeah, maybe, maybe, Truth, maybe or Dare. Truth or Dare. Like I was thinking that a bit in the theater when I was watching Truth or Dare that that <laughs> might. Time might make this movie. Yeah, it might make it like an April <laughs> Fool's Day or exactly. something. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it, but I mean, like by that same token, I feel like Happy Death Day succeeded where Truth or Dare didn't. You know, like it, yeah. it, it, it delivered on its goofy premise in a way that was satisfactory and fun. You know, but this movie, this movie, no, it's it's not goofy. It's it's serious, but like you actually are invested the entire yeah, way through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 very well done. It's not campy at all. And it's... the mom is great. Yeah. Like at first you totally like I, I love her no bullshit attitude towards the brother and his like theatrics he tries to put on. Yeah. You know, like like when he cause he has this like script that he basically runs through every time he goes into a house to basically convince the people that they are cleansing the house of the ghosts so that they may move on and give him the fucking money. Um yep. and she's just not having it. She she's just like, Do you do this to all your clients? Please shut, shut up. up. <laughs> like, just, it's, yeah. It's great. Yeah. And it's good foreshadowing. It's too. great. It's great because it sets up the fact that she doesn't like people when they talk too much. She would, she would fucking sew our mouths shut like really oh, fast. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'd be fast. She'd be sitting there watching that vlog going like, oh, that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> just kill them. Fucking <laughs> drive a railroad spike through them. Herman? It was Herman, right? Herman, yeah. <laughs> her, her, her son, Herman, who, despite the fact that he's the one that's set up throughout the entire movie, he is a small presence in the movie. He is. You know, he, he basically becomes the mom's heavy by the end of it and you kind of expected it to, you kind of expected it to, for him to show up at some point but as a ghost but the twist is he's still alive yeah yeah he's still alive she's hidden him away this entire time and they've been killing people this entire time <laughs> you know yep oh man so but really is is, is is that all that's like... i mean that's basically it the big spoilers are she eventually can see ghosts and uh, the the mom is the actual killer, and they get tortured, and then the ghosts save them in the end. And that's... yeah, and and I really like I really like the last line, the last oh, moment. last line's great. Like like yeah. oh, you shouldn't be alone right now. I'm not. I'm not because she can see ghosts now. So even though her friends and her brother are dead, she's not alone. Yeah, oh, they're still with oh, her. Oh, and it has a great and it has a great like. Oh hey, I've been looking all over for. Oh, you're a ghost. You're dead. Oh yeah, oh, the, the, the way man. they reveal that the brother is dead. 
And I'm not gonna basically, I'm not gonna spoil everything that happens to the brother, but like, I guess I kind of have already. But like, the way they reveal that the brother is dead at the end of the movie when she's just wandering around and she's trying to get help, trying to yeah. get help, and she like sees her brother and it's like, oh my god, there you are, bro, how you doing? Yeah, because they didn't, they didn't show you what happened. No, to no, it. they gave you, they told you what he was gonna do, but they didn't show it to you. <laughs> and uh, and then he turns around and is just like, uh, have you seen my girlfriend? Where is she? Or whatever. And like, you can hear the tone in his voice you can hear the look in his eyes like he kind of looks a little ethereal in the way they yeah. shot him and it's like oh shit that's your brother's ghost your brother's dead and when she starts breaking down right there my heart man yeah you're just like, oh. <laughs> and i'm like okay that's amazing that you did that because i hated her brother yeah <laughs> Yeah, you hate that character. He's such a piece of guy. shit. He's such the whole reason every he's the he's the one bitch. He's the yes. one bitch in this movie yes. that gets everyone killed. <laughs> you know, Not it's like this one bitch. Hey, hey, can we do a different place? I don't want to do this one. No, we gotta do this. I need the money right now. Oh fuck, why? Well, because I fucking stole I, I took money from the mob, so we're gonna get beat up. So this is all your fault. <laughs> this is all your fucking fault. And on top of that, fucking guy breaks his leg and refuses to call an ambulance. Yeah. Do you know how quickly this movie would have ended if he called the ambulance? Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they had no trouble. <laughs> they just been like, Well, ambulance on its way, let's go. <laughs> this one bitch, and it's that that's that guy. <laughs> but despite that, like, she she sees her brother on the road, and I'm like, oh man. Jesus, good job, yeah, movie. You got it was, me. It wasn't quite the end of the Black Coat's daughter. No, but, no, not quite know. there. Like, that that hits you a lot harder. Whoa, like, yeah, that one's rough. <laughs> that one's fucking. That, that one's devastating. But like, so yeah, I highly recommend Malevolent. I've pretty much spoiled everything for you in the spoiler section. You've been pretty much the ending now. Um, so, uh, where can they find you, Camp Jacula? All right, you can find me here on YouTube, and I stream on Twitch. Thursday at 6 p.m. and Sunday at 9 p.m. That's Pacific Standard Time. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. On Instagram, I am Satanic Jacula. And everywhere else, I'm just Count Jacula. So just look for that shit. Fuck yeah. And you all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter and shit. And by the way, you better stay tuned to this channel because later this month, New Blood Splattered Cinema episode. We just got done recording most of it. We have like three scenes to record. Yeah, yeah. That's basically it. <laughs> and then we're going to be done. I did all the voiceover sessions, so my throat's like fucking hating me right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been hating me the last two days because I did that. I helped uh, my girlfriend with her project. Yeah. And we filmed some stuff. And so like my voice is just like, stop. <laughs> so of course we sat down to record a bunch of vlogs. <laughs> yeah, because we're geniuses. We're that geniuses way. that way. So, uh, as per usual, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And I forgot to say it in the pre-spoiler section, but I will include an Amazon affiliate link to the movie and... No, wait, I won't, because it's a Netflix, it's a Netflix movie. Netflix Never mind, that's why I didn't say it. <laughs> <sighs> yeah! <laughs> I just... Peace out, my fellow go-rounds. I'll catch y'all later. <laughs>